Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. I'm an artist. Welcome into my studio. And today I just wanted to go through the pastel materials that I've been using recently. I've only just started with pastels. I've done three coloured pastel works that I've shown on my Facebook page and they've caused quite a bit of interest. So people are naturally asking what I'm using, the paper type, the pastel type and all my supplies. So I thought I'd do this video really quickly just to work through it because I'm not using many supplies whatsoever but the ones that I am using I think some of them are quite critical to get right because a lot of people have been having problems in the past with pastels and paper and that type of thing could be at fault. Um, so basically I'm using pencils for the detailed work. I've got um, Stabilo Carbothello ones which I'll look into in detail. I'm also using pastel sticks then that's really for the undertones. So basically the base or the um, underpainting. So it'd be like the underpainting with oils. I'm doing that in pastels using those pastel sticks. Now you don't have to have the exact brands I've got, but I know these work for sure. Although I will be trying out some new brands, some new papers in the very near future. So let's have a quick look and see what's inside these uh, boxes. Okay, so the Stabilo Carbothello pencils, they're a real good brand and they're really reasonably priced as well. I got the 60 because I knew that I'd want a good set of pencils with plenty of colours. So when you open them up, you've got two trays. There you go. So you've got plenty and plenty of colours in there. You can see the ones that I've been using fairly frequently. You've got a kneaded eraser, which is good for actually um, erasing pastels. So you've got that bit of tackiness with the eraser, so it lifts it back off. And you've also got a pencil sharpener in there. And I've got no idea why they put this in there, because it is next to useless. As you can see, the actual nib of the pencil, the pastel part, is just proud of that and whenever I do it, it just snaps it and look how it wobbles in there. But, you know, it's pencil size. I had thought that perhaps it was, that was meant for pastel sticks or something to sharpen them, but I've got no idea why that's in there. So the pencils are great, the sharpeners, not so much. And then you've got one of these stumps in there as well, which is really handy. If you've seen my videos, you've seen, seen me using these paper stumps. Now Durant ones are made from a rice paper and they're very soft so they blend out really well. Only a very uh, cheap and then you can also get harder ones as well that actually rather than blending out they more push in there more. So I like to have a couple of those. I also blend with my fingers as well. So that's the pencil set I've got. Now you can use other pencils. Fabe Castell got this set. I haven't used them. I had these years and years and years ago when I first tried pastel and it didn't work out well for me. But I've done a quick test with these and they seem very, very similar to the Carbothello. Very similar. So if you've got those, you don't need to go rushing out to buy the same Carbothello ones that I'm using. So that's the pencils. I treated myself then to a Conti a Paris. Uh, these are the sticks. I think it's 60 again and they come in this box set okay so you've got a sponge layer and then you've got this get that there you've got all these colors to pick from um, I had it on sale I had it at half price so it was a real good buy and these are quite hard sticks but they are you know really firm and I found that you can use these to get the underdrawing or underpainting whatever way you want to look at it in. So when you see my other videos, you'll see, for instance, where I'm doing leopard eyes, I'm going in dark with these first, usually I use on the side, and then I smudge it out with my finger, and then I go over the top with a pencil. So a real good range in there of pastels, and there's lots of blacks and lots of the earth colours in there. The only thing I've found with virtually all of these sets, although it looks like they've got a dark brown, none of them seem to have a almost black brown, so that's something I'm going to look out for. Got the kneaded eraser in there again. There's the hard stumps and a couple of these uh, Conti pencils as well, which are basically pastels. Okay, so that's the only two things really I use for the drawings. Now, you haven't got to get these. 
I picked up this little set the other day, haven't used them yet. It was on offer, Faber Castell half sticks. The reason these are good, they're nice and small, so it's very easy to use them on the side on the paper. Really easy. And they seem just as good. And that little bit thicker as well. I've also got these really cheap ones, WH Smiths. Well, I say cheap. They were £6 for that few. They're not quite as good, not as vibrant and don't spread as easily. So I doubt I'll be using them that much, but they're okay-ish. Um, this is a set that I had years ago as well. I've just done a quick test on them. They seem fine as well. New pastel. You know, it seems that if you get a decent brand of pastels, they seem pretty good. They don't seem... It doesn't seem to be as critical as it does sometimes with um, coloured pencils to, to pay a lot of money for them. The paper I keep on about to everybody, pastel matte. This is the part that I found critical uh, to get right. If you don't get the right paper, nothing works. So pastel matte, I like to get a couple of pads like this. You can see there's different four different colours in there. So you've got the white, which I won't use. You've got the sienna, the brown and anthracite, which is like a dark, not black, but it's a dark colour. So these come with little bits of uh, paper in between them. See, I've cut that one just to do my testers on. And then they've got a textured, very slight textured surface which grabs the pastel. Okay, so that's the paper that I recommend. I haven't tried out any other papers. I've got some in my stock now to try out. The only other type I have actually tried is um, Dale Arrowney. You've probably seen this on a, one of my videos where I show this is the white pastel mat. So if I use that on its side, okay, and then blend it in with my finger, get a real nice vibrant and soft looking blue. If I use Dale Arrowney pastel mat, it's so textured and it's such an artificial texture, it's very even, I get that and when I blend it in, it's still there. I don't even know if it's meant to use the other side, but to be honest, that blends in better, but you can't get any layers on top of it, it doesn't build with layers. So that's why I don't use any of those type of cheap flimsy papers, i rather use this really thick pastel mat. So as you can see, not many supplies at all. And that's basically it. So I use Carbofella pencils, the Conti sticks underneath, and the pastel mat, and that's how I've been creating my drawings lately. The only other thing I would say is, eventually you're probably gonna want some soft pastels for the background because the sticks, and even these are not that soft to get a real fine blend going. But for now, if you're just starting out, you can get a small set of pencils, a small set of sticks, critical point, the pastel mat, and then you're away to go. So I hope you found that interesting, and I hope it saves you a bit of money, because buying art materials can be fairly expensive, although these do last quite a long time. But if you get the right materials at the start, you're going to save a lot of money because I've got drawers full of material that promise the earth. They say they're all going to work. And as soon as you try them within seconds, you know this is rubbish. It's just poor quality. And they end up in your drawer because they're too expensive to throw away, but you're never going to use them again. So hopefully this will get you on the right um, direction straight away with the materials that I'm using anyway for pastels and I'm going to try out all different types and then I can report back to you on future videos and tell you exactly what's working for me and what I don't like. So see you all again real soon. If you're looking for more art resources I really think I've got you covered. I've got a brand new Patreon channel and on there every month I bring out exclusive full-length videos for you and also exclusive reference photos with line art. I've got a dedicated website for tutorials, that's jasonmorgan.co.uk, lots of full length videos, some of them up to 8 hours long on there, and there's also ebook tutorials as well if you'd like to read rather than see the videos. I've got a dedicated reference photo website, wildlifeart-online, 
www.ghostbusters.com there's over 900 images on there all for you to use copyright free and they all come with the easy trace line art as well and don't forget my youtube channel is growing all the time if you can possibly subscribe then you know you're guaranteed not to miss out on any new videos and updates see you all again real soon